The way that we understand and interpret the world has a lot to do with our physical bodies. How we feel about things drives the way that we think and that we behave. And this is known as embodied cognition. You can't think about thinking without understanding how the body plays a role in that. And in fact, even our language is often built on top of our physical interactions with the world. So we say, that was a rough event, or that was a heavy movie, or she has a warm personality. At the root of our language is the way that we touch and feel the world. When we're trying to decide something like, is that person friendly, or is that company competent and trustworthy, we're using the same brain networks that are involved in assessing warmth and texture and solidness and weight. In other words, the haptic machinery that we have is what helps us answer questions about personal warmth or friendliness. In our daily lives, touch serves as a high bandwidth channel to move information between people. It's a really powerful communication tool. So to give assurance, you, you lay a hand on somebody's forearm, or to give kudos, you slap somebody on the back. And in an aggressive situation, people poke each other. And when people shake hands, they notice the firmness of each other's grip. And to show affection, people do things like move a hair out of the way or nuzzle up with somebody's cheek. We communicate a lot more information through touch than we're normally aware of. There was a study at DePaul University where they blindfolded people and asked them to communicate a social emotion just by touching the other person. So they were asked to communicate things like anger or fear or disgust or love or gratitude or sympathy or happiness or sadness just through touch. And people were blindfolded and figured there'd be no way they'd be able to communicate that but they did much better than they thought. 75% of the time, the other person was able to understand the social emotion that was being communicated. And this just underscores how good we are at using this communication channel. Just look at how important touch is in the world of sports. So when you watch a basketball game, you see all these professional basketball players high-fiving and chest bumping and slapping each other on the back. So what's that about? One possibility is that it's just a tradition and it doesn't have any particular meaning, but some people started getting interested in whether this actually was a form of bonding and was therefore better for the game. So scientists from the University of Illinois started looking into this question and they measured the number of times that there was friendly contact between team members. And they found something amazing, which is that by the end of the season, those teams that had more physical contact were ranked much higher. Why? Well, the best hypothesis is that it increased trust and affiliation and it decreased stress hormones. And this sheds light on a tradition in long distance bike riding. So if a cyclist is slowing down, they're really running out of energy, a fellow cyclist will ride up beside them and just lay a finger on their back. And this speeds them up, it's eerily effective. So just a simple human touch is enough to reinvigorate someone and let them find a second wind. This is presumably why we see touch across the primate world. When monkeys groom each other, they're strengthening their trust and their bonds with one another. It also has health benefits. Just like the NBA athletes can lower their stress by touch communication during the season, if you look around an office space, you see people doing this all the time. They're touching their own shoulders or rubbing their forehead or massaging their own neck. Presumably, this is lowering their own stress hormones and decreasing their heart rate. Across the world, people want to keep their communication channel of touch open. You've probably noticed that in the South, people are a lot more touchy-feely than they are up North in, let's say, Scandinavia. So why is that? Well, one theory goes that in the South, where it's warm, people wear fewer clothes and there's a lot more skin exposed. And it only pays off to touch somebody if they're going to feel it. And up North, where it's cold, they're wearing heavy clothes and that communication channel is essentially cut off. So they're not touching each other much. So from our cognition and our language to our health and our happiness, touch is right at the center of our lives.